Hi, hello, my name is Noni Sope and welcome to Open Studio. Today I am chatting with affordable fashion columnist, Athena May. Hello, Miss Thing. Hi, how are you? I am awesome, how are you? I'm well, thanks. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us. Now, tell me, you are a fashion columnist. Uh -huh. What is that? Okay, fashion columnist, I am your friend. My, your friend, mm -hmm. everyone who reads my column, I am their friend. I am uh -huh. here to advise them on what to wear or if they have any questions about which heels to pair with which dress, I am that friend who's going to tell you, girl, this looks good. Or if it doesn't match, you know, just give me a call. This is why I normally include my email at the end of my column. Oh. Because it's a relationship between myself and the reader. Awesome. And that's who I am. That's the fashion columnist. Now, how do you create, um, usually when we talk about class sophistication, you know, uh, the, the kind of fashion that says, I got millions in my bank account. Mm -hmm. How do I do that with my bank account? Well, it's quite easy. Mm -hmm. People think it's impossible because normally we'd see celebrities in their gear, in their trends, and it's, you find those trends in stores like your Zara or H&M, and they're quite pricey. Yes. But they are affordable ways of getting those trends, and trends n not, doesn't necessarily mean fashion, uh -huh. you know, because fashion and trends are two different things. Being fashionable can be someone who wears a, you know, a skin-tight jean, with a nice shirt and you know matching heels, something that is classy. It's a yes. statement, but yeah. And um, I see you look gorgeous. Thank you. Again, I'm complimenting. I'm grouping. <laughs> but um, do you uh -huh. have a work day type of feel, clothing that you put on, and a casual day? Um, and not necessarily. It depends on the field you're in. Mm -hmm. Like normally, people in a corporate environment, they would have to wear you know, something that looks more presentable at work, whereas I'm uh -huh. a journalist as well. So I am able to wear, to dress casually and to have my own fashion flair at work, which is quite great. Um, but yeah, normally if I have an interview, I would wear something like the outfit I'm wearing today. Mm -hmm. It's more formal. It's a nice clean cut pants with a nice long line down the hem, mm -hmm. which it emphasizes length because I'm quite short. Oh, yeah, I okay. am. And it's also high waisted, so it makes my legs look exceptionally longer than usual. So I would wear something like this with a nice shirt, and the shirt is not your plain everyday shirt with the collar. Uh -huh. It has a little, it's a nice fabric which is more or less, see, like it's a little bit see through. So it has a bit of sex appeal. Ooh. And it has the deep V cut because our modern day woman, we don't necessarily stick to the standard of a plain shirt and, you know, slacks. We like to have. Sexy and strong, and that's a, that's a good interview. Boss like. lady vibes. Basically. Yeah. Okay, you're speaking my language, <laughs> and I'm loving oh. it. <laughs> now, mm. is your fashion, um, your column, mostly focused uh, on women? And if so, which age groups of women? Um, not necessarily, because my next column, I'll be speaking to the newly appointed editor of GQ, giving our guy oh. some great tips. Oh, okay, this girl. Yes, he is go. eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go. Yeah, so our guys will be getting a treat, and he will instruct them on how to dress according to a, well, a budget, you know, because even though he looks amazing, and he is the editor of GQ, so he knows yeah. how to dress, but they are tips. How did you get into um, that conversation and that partnership, I assume, with the GQ editor, you say? He's really approachable. Uh -huh. Yeah, more so than you'd think. And um, I called him, and he was more than willing to give us some advice. Yeah. You are schooling me about the pants, because when I look at those pants, when I'm going out shopping, I'm like, I'm not getting those. Like, they are so my aunt, my mom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> However, yeah. I'm loving it. Thank and you. What personal development, how do you groom yourself? How do you grow yourself into knowing when to approach, what moves to take at what time? You know, my, my personal budget tips, they normally stem from having, not having enough money. And you know, a lot of students, they, they face the situation that I faced in the past where yeah. you want to look fabulous, you want to dress well, but you don't have the budget to do so. And going into debt for fashion, I mean, it's not the best idea especially with trends, when trends are temporary, they're mm -hmm. not long lasting. So you don't want to spend a lot of money on a trend when it may not be in fashion next year. Mm. So um, yeah, this is how I learned to groom myself in a manner which is budget friendly. So I would 
shop at stores like uh, Jumbo oh. or um, the parade in town, markets, you know, you have to find these loopholes because you could find a lot of gems there. Yeah, uh, including this outfit I'm wearing today. I think I paid about 80 bucks for the entire outfit. So Do you believe her? Because I don't. <laughs> However, she did tell me that the yeah. top was 40 bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is 40 bucks at Jumbo, and the pants is, I think, also about 20 bucks. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can do it. You just have to have an eye and the patience to look. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I think um, <laughs> I need to rethink my thinking. Mm -hmm. But um, what is the mistake that we often make when we go out to shop in terms of choosing which shops to go to when we believe we're going to have a mm -hmm. sense of style? I think the mistake we make is not checking the quality of the clothing that we're buying. Mm -hmm. Because we'd buy something which is beautiful. Let's say we go to Mr. Price and we buy a beautiful dress. But sometimes the quality of clothing is not durable. So mm -hmm. you'd have one wear and suddenly you find that you've got some fluff or you've got some discoloration yeah. of your clothing. And that's not something that is, it doesn't look stylish. It doesn't look classy. So oh. you have to look for the type of fabric that you're looking at as well. You may want something. And if you really do want an item which you think, you know, the fabric is not that great or the quality won't last too long, uh -huh. then perhaps take a photograph of that and go to a tailor or go to someone who you know can make the, the, out of the outfit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. And now, is it more about going to a retailer or someone who can de personally design something for you or to no. the shops? Or is it more about discovering your own fashion sense? It's about discovering your own fashion sense and also being, being conscious about whether this is actually a piece that's going to be long lasting. Is, mm -hmm. it, is it a valuable piece to invest in? Because essentially we're investing in our clothing. Clothing yeah. is expensive. I know. And you know, the good thing about trends is that they always cycle. So something that's in fashion today was possibly in fashion last year or maybe a couple of years ago. Maybe and in the 90s. I, I do actually have, um, there's a favorite dress of mine. It was mm -hmm. my older mom, oldest, my mom's older sister. Vintage. There we go. And I rock it. Ah. <laughs> so I do I have no doubt about that. Yeah. <laughs> and you had it from a fashion columnist, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so a trick for everyone out there is to go to a vintage store, a second-hand store, maybe St. Anne's or Salvation Army, mm -hmm. and you can find really lovely suits and dresses. Mm -hmm. And if they don't fit well, because normally you'd find that they'd be a size too big or a size too small, you could always go to a tailor and they can make it fit you for about 200 bucks. So that can be tailor made to fit you. Oh, now, where, in, um, where is your column available? It's in all Cape community newspapers. So your local Cape Towner, the Atlantic Sun, the Tatler newspaper, False Bay Echo, and the Athlone News. It's, I think, about 15 papers. Whoa! Yeah, so yeah, it should moving. be. moving. <laughs> yeah, and it's accessible. It's a free community paper. So please do read the paper. <laughs> like when I get there. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am with the gorgeous Athena May. But before we get down to the gritty and nitty of fashion, of being a fashion columnist, let's go to the edge.